It's every passenger's worst nightmare. Both pilots slumped over the controls unconscious. With no one else to turn to, a nervous flight attendant reluctantly admits you into the cockpit. You take the captain's place at the controls. 163 nervous passengers behind you and a dizzying plethora of knobs, switches, and displays before you. What do you do now? The good news is, the plane is likely already flying on autopilot. It's not going to fall out of the sky. You can use the autopilot to do most of the flying, but you'll still have to land it. Every aircraft has a different cockpit, and while there are some similarities, we don't have enough time in this video to train you on every one you might encounter an emergency in. So we'll instead just be learning one, the ever-popular 737. This is a 737-600 with its modernized glass cockpit displays. The first thing you're going to want to do is put on the pilot's headset and find the pilot audio controls. They're on the pedestal to your right. At the top is the mic selector group. Make sure that VHF-1 is selected, otherwise you could end up merely talking to your passengers. You tune frequencies up here. Chances are whatever frequency is already dialed in here will work fine, so just find the push to talk button on the yoke and hold it down to speak over the radio. Say something like, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday! Uh, I'm a passenger on board Janet Flight. 1603. But both pilots are unconscious. I repeat, uh, Janet 1603. Both pilots are unconscious and I'm a passenger flying the airplane. This isn't exactly what ATC is expecting to hear, so they'll probably respond with something like, uh, Last calling center. Say again? Just repeat yourself as much as you need to until you get the point across to them. Once ATC realizes what's going on, they're going to put out the call for a qualified 737 pilot to help talk you down. In the meantime, they'll be vectoring other aircraft out of your way. At some point, ATC will likely give you a heading or an altitude to fly. You can use the autopilot to help. Along the top here is the mode control panel, which controls the autopilot. Let's assume ATC gives you a heading. Janet 1603, I'd like you to turn your aircraft left to a heading of 265 if you can. Uh, okay. Dial the heading into the heading window by turning this knob. The aircraft isn't turning because the autopilot is following the flight plan. Press the Heading Select button to change this. The button will highlight, and you can see here on the primary flight display that Heading Select mode is active. Now the airplane starts a turn. You can see your current heading on the compass down here. Note that we're commencing our turn. At some point, ATC will want you to descend so you can land. Okay, good job, Janet 1603. Now I need you to descend to 10,000 feet whenever you can. All right, I'll try. To start descending, dial the altitude they tell you into the altitude window by turning this knob. Again, the aircraft won't descend because the autopilot is in cruise mode. Press the level change button to change the autopilot into an altitude change mode. Now your aircraft is descending. Don't be alarmed, the thrust levers will move backwards on their own. You can see your current altitude on the primary flight display here. Note that we've started a descent. As you get lower, ATC will want you to slow down in preparation for landing. If they give you a speed... Thanks for calling Janet 1603. If you can, go ahead and slow down to 240 knots. Okay. Okay. Dial that speed into the IAS slash mock window using this knob. You can see your current speed on the primary flight display here. That little green arrow means you're slowing down. That's good. As you fly out of range of whichever traffic controller you're talking to, you may get a new frequency. Janet 1603. You're flying out of my range. If you can, I'd like you to switch to frequency 126.85. They'll help you the rest of the way. Okay, 126.85. Go back to the audio controls from before. Use the big outer knob here to set the first few digits of the new frequency. Use this smaller inner knob to set the decimal portion. Once you've set it, press the transfer button here to make the new frequency active. Then let your new controller know that you're here. Hello? This is Janet1603. Got you loud and clear, Janet1603. You're doing great. If at some point you get a new heading, 
Janet 1603, you're doing just fine. Now I need you to turn left to 220. Okay, 220. All you have to do is dial that heading into the heading window. No need to press heading select again, it's still active from before. And lastly, if you get a new airspeed. Almost there, Janet 1603. Slow down to 200 knots, and then we'll talk you through the landing. Okay, 200 knots. Dial the new speed into the IAS slash mock window. If the aircraft isn't slowing down fast enough, you can give it a little help by deploying the speed brakes. Pick this handle up over the gate, then pull it back to open the speed brakes. Open them all the way to flight detent. Just don't forget to close them again when you're done slowing down. Janet 1603, go ahead and turn right now to a heading of 030. That will line you up with the runway. Right to 030. And when you're ready, descend to 2,000 feet. Okay, 2,000. Controlling altitude, heading, and airspeed should get you safely close to whatever airport they're vectoring you for. You'll want to be pointing towards a runway and both low enough and slow enough to make a safe landing. Landing is the tricky part. A good landing speed for a 737 is somewhere around 130 to 150 knots. Let's assume that ATC tells you to land at 135 knots. Now the 737 can't fly at 135 knots without flaps, so you'll need to bring those down. If you take a look below the landing gear lever, you'll see a placard with the maximum flap speeds for each flap position. Right now the flaps are up, 0 degrees. As you slow down below each maximum speed, you'll want to bring the flaps down to the next position. You want to keep doing this until you're at 135 knots with the flaps fully extended to 40 degrees. You can also see the flap positions here on the primary flight display. As you slow down past the flaps up marker, pull up the flap lever here and put it back on the one position. Back on the primary flight display, note now that the speed for flaps one is displayed. Once you reach this speed, you'll want to lower flaps two. Rinse and repeat as you continue to slow down. So let's put 135 knots into our speed window. And start slowing down for landing. Keep lowering the flaps as you slow down. Also very important is the landing gear. Check that you're below the maximum safe landing gear speed, then press this lever down to lower the landing gear. You should see these three lights turn green to indicate that all three landing gear are down and locked. The landing gear will also help slow the airplane down. Janet 1603, you should see Travis Air Base directly ahead. Land on any runway you like. Godspeed, sir. Okay, you're lined up for the runway, you're at a safe landing speed, the gear and flaps are down, and you're starting to feel like you might even survive this. It's time to turn off the autopilot and hand fly it to a landing. Press the Command A or Command B button, whichever is lit, to disable the autopilot. That will sound an alarm which you can silence by pressing this button here. Put your hands on the yoke, you're flying the plane now. Use smooth corrections to stay lined up with the runway. If you drift to the left, start a gentle turn to the right to fix it. Try to keep a nice, easy descent towards the runway. As you get closer, you'll start to see the pappy lights on the runway. You'll want to see two white lights and two red lights. If you see three or four red lights, you're too low. Pull back to arrest your descent for a bit, and then resume descending. If you see three or four white lights, you're too high. Push forward to increase your descent. Not a lot, though. Just focus on staying aligned with the runway and on the correct descent rate, and you'll arrive at the threshold with the aircraft under control. As you get lower, you'll hear the airplane start to tell you how high you are, like this. 1,000. When you hear 50, it's time to start the flare. Pull back gently on the stick to bring the nose up to the horizon while pulling the thrust levers all the way back with your right hand.
When you feel the airplane touch down, activate reverse thrust by pulling back on these two paddles here. The speed brake will extend automatically. Push in on both of these pedals, like so, to use the wheel brakes. Keep your eyes forward so you don't roll off the side of the runway. Use your feet to steer by pushing on the left or right pedal, like so. When your speed gets to 60 knots, stop the thrust reversers by returning these paddles to the full down position. Keep braking the wheels by pushing in on the foot pedals. When the aircraft is stopped, set the parking brake by pulling on this lever, then shut down both engines by moving these two levers labeled fuel control to the cutoff position. You should see on the engine display that the engines are powering down. As the engines spool down, alarms will start to go off. No need to worry though, with the engines off, emergency personnel can now approach the aircraft. Grab a beer from the galley, pull an emergency exit handle, and enjoy the ride down the inflatable slide. You just became a hero today.